My name is Emily Lovell, and today I'm going to talk about our experience developing a low-cost sewable microcontroller called the Lily Tiny and a workshop guide to support it, which was work undertaken to help broaden access to electronic textiles. My co-authors on this project are Leah Beakley and James Davis. So this work started over 10 years ago when I was a graduate student at the MIT Media Lab. And I was teaching a lot of e-textiles workshops with students and educators. These workshops were really successful, but we found that the activities weren't regularly making it into classrooms beyond our research lab. So we wanted to understand why. Looking at the landscape of e-textiles materials and toolkits at the time, we saw a bit of a gap. On one end of the spectrum, there were low cost, readily available materials that could be used to make very simple circuits. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's the lily pad Arduino, which requires a bit more upfront financial investment and also requires knowing how to program, but is very powerful. So we wanted to think about how to bridge this gap between these two types of activities. Secondly, we saw a gap in instructional resources. There were books at the time that supported individuals making their own e-textile projects, and there were also a lot of great educator resources on a number of other topics, but there weren't really any educator resources for teaching electronic textiles. We were also inspired by and built on a lot of other related work, in particular that which established the value of teaching with electronic textiles. So we set out to address these gaps that I've just mentioned. In particular, first, we wanted to design a small sewable low-cost microcontroller that was pre-programmed. So we used the open source LilyPad Arduino accelerometer board layout, and we modified it to break out the pins on the AtTiny85 microcontroller. We then wrote a program that makes each pin control a different LED behavior. So this would allow the introduction of computation without having to program just yet. This slide shows our prototypes that led up to commercial release of a product, the Lily Tiny, with Sparkfun Electronics. Secondly, in thinking about bridging this uh, teaching resource gap, we designed a new workshop guide. So this contains a set of activities, each including instructions, handouts, materials lists, and we published all of this online for free. There's a range of activities in the guide that range from simple to a little bit more complex using the Lily Tiny. And this also includes a bonus activity that we developed with Natalie Freed and G Chi, which is the plush monster on this slide, which uses the Lily Tiny in this case to have a little LED heart that beats in a heartbeat pattern. In order to test and get feedback on these resources, we piloted them with middle schoolers at an outreach center on our campus. First, I taught a workshop using early versions of the Lily Tiny and workshop guide. And then we gave these materials to another educator and asked her to teach a workshop, which we observed and took notes and used that to make our materials better. Here you can see students from those workshops with their projects, which were light up patches, but use the Lily Tiny to control LEDs. So we released the workshop guide on the internet for free. And we had a product out with SparkFun, but we never really promoted the project much or followed up on it until the summer of 2020 when we wondered what had been happening all this time. So we set out to then understand the impact of the Lily Tiny in the 10 years since its release. So the Lily Tiny now sits in this gap between simple and complex, low cost and a bit higher cost materials and we wanted to see what else had emerged in that 10 year period. First, we found that there's the Lily Twinkle, which was released at the same time as the Tiny by SparkFun. And the Lily Twinkle is the same hardware that we prototyped, but it runs a different program that twinkles all of the lights. And it didn't have any supporting curriculum at the time of its release. It was packaged also into various kits, which are shown here. And secondly, we found many examples of other derivative boards that we had nothing to do with, some of which use the Lily Tiny name and or purple solder mask, despite the lack of affiliation. So everything pictured here came after our board, the Lily Tiny, and we think point to our being successful in this middle space. 
So we also did some sales data analysis, which was made possible because SparkFun is the sole manufacturer and distributor of the Lily Tiny. So we got eight years of sales data dating from the release of the Lily Tiny and Lily Twinkle in 2012 through the start of our investigation in 2020. And this also included data on the Lily Pad Arduino line, which is also solely manufactured and distributed by SparkFun. So first we looked at whether the Lily Tiny fare has fared well as a commercial product. And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Over 81,000 breakout boards have been sold between the Lily Tiny and Lily Twinkle, and sales have been quite steady over the eight years that we looked at. We also looked at sales data across all of the soluble microcontrollers offered by SparkFun. So this includes now also LilyPad products. And here each pie slice is representing a specific product and they're grouped by color by product family. Of particular note is that the Lily Tiny was the single most ordered soluble microcontroller during this time period. And when we group by hardware, so now combining the Lily Tiny and the Lily Twinkle, this board was purchased as often as boards from the more capable lily pad main family. So next we wanted to understand if we reached our intended market of educators. So the sales data doesn't specify who's purchasing the boards, but it does tell us the quantity in each order. So we assume that hobbyists purchase a few at a time and educators are probably purchasing in bulk. And when we took out the distributor data and looked only at customers, we found that the Lily Tiny is ordered in greater average quantity and more often in quantity than boards from the other product families. So we think this is suggestive that it's being used in educational contexts. So we think we've been successful given what I've shared so far today, but why? Well, first off, we think it helped that we use widely available and inexpensive technology, namely the at Tiny 85. Secondly, we were able to leverage a lot of existing infrastructure, including SparkFun's workflow for bringing a product like this to market and manufacturing it. We also designed for our own community. As educators ourselves, we were able to have insight into what was needed and gather a lot of feedback directly from other educators and students. And lastly, we got lucky. We had a network that allowed us to bring this product to market and we were designing at a really fitting moment in time. So we think we've done quite well to build a bridge from cheaper lower tech activities to using the pre-programmed Lily Tiny, but this reveals that there is still room for future work, in particular, to think about how to address the remaining gap between the Lily Tiny and learning to program with LilyPad Arduino. Thank you. <laughs>